yo, but tonight, this rebuild turns into a click clack. We load. Now on the Impact Lounge. Now on the Impact Lounge. So right now, you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total nonstop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans. This is Trent, and I am alongside the man who cannot answer a text, the guy who cannot reply, the guy who is so hard to get a hold of, but God damn it, he is one great guy. Kyle, what's up, brother? All right, Trent, my, my phone died on the way to Bound for Glory, all right? <laughs> yeah. Let's the get this out of the, the way. Year. I know you're going to confront me as soon as we click fucking record on the podcast. So oh, let me get this out of the way for you, for uh, Impact Dude from the Heel Cast, who was also let down by that situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I broke my iPhone on the way to Bound for Glory. Oh, my and God. And now I have an Android for the first oh, time in my God. life. And it's not good. Dummy. Yeah. We are uh, we're starting this off on a bad note here, Kyle. We we are debuting today. We are debuting on the Impact Lounge, and this is the news you give us that you you couldn't have a, a phone, a working phone, on the way to Bound for Glory. This is how you started off. This is the impression you put in the listeners' heads. I guess Terrible. this is this is for the first impression. You know, they got to know us for who we really are here, Trent. Well, hey, the, the, the truth the truth hurts, but hey, listen, <laughs> the truth also is. That we were both live in the building at Bound for Glory, but I got a little, oh, I got a little something to, to, to say about being there live. I get I get a Snapchat from 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 you from Kyle here. I get a Snapchat and it's it's Kyle telling me what t shirt he's gonna wear tonight, and I go oh shit he's wearing a he's wearing a Wolves t shirt. I go hey is, what do you think Davy Richards returns tonight? You know maybe Eddie's uh, backing up Eddie. You know we'll see. I'm like all right shit. So I'm looking for Kyle. I'm like all right cool. It'll be easy to spot the Wolves t shirt. I don't think a lot of guys are wearing a Wolves t shirt. 2018 right now it's like all right i'm looking for kyle he said he's second row i'm looking for kyle you know i'm shows packing in i got a good spot i've i've, I've hunkered down on like basically a second row left side of the ring I'm, I'm looking for kyle i'm looking i'm looking i get i'm texting and when you text an iphone and it goes green that's a bad sign it's a bad sign and it went green kyle it went green i said either he's got an android or his phone's dead and i'm like oh man what am i gonna do <laughs> So I, I finally – did you make it for the first match? Did You made it in time, right? I did. All right. So this is yeah. what happened. Uh, All right. We got hit with a ton of traffic on the way there. Queens is a zoo. It's a madhouse. We got hit with a ton of traffic. I'm panicking. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. And my, my buddy Cody, you know, he, he means well, but he's stopping for coffee. He's stopping for food. He's, he's stopping oh, when there's no time for stopping. And I, I'm sweating, man. I'm worried. I'm oh no, I'm gonna miss Bound for Glory. I'm gonna miss Bound for Glory. So we pull up to the building. I'm convinced because it's it's literally eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock. We pull up to the building. I'm convinced. Oh no, I, I bet you I missed for freaking two matches. They probably had. They might have filmed something, but they could have filmed Explosion before the show. I don't want to miss anything. I think, God <laughs> damn it, I missed something. So we get there literally eight o'clock. Pull up. There's valet parking standing right in front of the building. I didn't think twice about it. Just, you know, just throw, throw the money in your wallet at the Fancy. guy. Get, run right guy. into the building. So this is the first time I've ever arrived to a show like this late and just smoothly walk through the front door. No lines. Walk through the front door. Usher points me right to my seats and it, it, it worked perfectly. It was great. I got there right in time. And as soon as I walk into my seat, I'm greeted by fuck you, Kyle, coming from the other side, the other row. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. my, my good pal Trent here. That's uh, that's the greeting I received from him. That was the first words I ever said to you in person was, fuck hey, you, Kyle. Kyle. And Let's... you look over, I go, fuck you. <laughs> oh, man. No, listen, hey, it was cool to... Uh, Cool that you made it in time. It was uh, it was nice to finally meet you. I got I got a little precursor to, before we even get into the show, man. You won't believe this. Let's hear it. So we, so so you know we know you know me me and the lady, me and my my girlfriend Nicole know a lot of the roster. We we know a lot of them from AW. Uh, 
Her and Moose are, are super tight. She's basically become Moose's personal nurse. And <laughs> I wanted masseuse. to, I wanted to say something about that to you, but it kind of, uh, I, I didn't want to be, you know, I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to be a dick or anything like that. But uh, just in conversation when we were standing there chilling, talking, I caught you say, "Oh, my girl was upstairs massaging Moose," and like yeah. uh, my eyes kind of just like popped out of my head for a second, <laughs> like, "Oh." Uh, what? What kind of guy is Trent? I, 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 you know, I, I, I've heard of swingers and stuff like that. I don't know what's going no, on here. No, no there, well, then we know bestiality in this relationship. She is not, <laughs> hey, she is not doing anything with a moose. But, uh, but uh, no, I mean, you know, listen, she's a nurse. She likes to care, but moose, he, he loves my little nurse. My, my, she loves my little blonde nurse, and oh, he. No. Uh, and so he's he's always had this like weird neck and shoulder injury or something. And she, one time she like. Helped him out before a match. I guess it got him through it. That's it. That's it. That was it. Moose is uh Moose has got his own personal nurse. But the benefit of that is Moose is like we we we, we legit get to the venue and we walk right in. We pass past the line and we walk right in because Moose is like yeah come on up. So I'm like we didn't even scan our tickets. Our tickets never got scanned. So like we we walk in. We go right to the locker room. Uh. She starts, uh, you know, helping Moose out. He's got this weird pulled muscle or something. So she's work- She's helping out Moose. I see the OVE. I'm hanging out with them, talking to Rich Swan, a couple of guys I know from AEW. Oh, and, Trent, uh, you know, I've been thinking, you. like, Trent from Chicago. How the hell did you get here to New York? What are you doing here? Well, you broke up there, Kyle. What was that? I'm saying, you know, all the guys that know you from AEW in Chicago, <laughs> they're probably thinking, like, how the hell did Trent from Chicago get here? Yeah, they're probably looking at me like, "Where the hell did this guy come from?" You know, he was uh, a <laughs> fed. But no, they were, they were happy. Working for the McMahon's to undercover to spy. What's good in the hood? Undercover spy. No, they were happy to see me. They're like, "Hey, what's up, dude? What are you doing here?" I mean, looking back at it, I'm like, I could have just uh, could have just walked in. I mean, I, but I did pay for a ticket. I want to support the company, which is great. I, 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 I'm glad I did buy a ticket. But anyway, no, we get up there and we're we're hanging out and and then I, uh, I, you know, I head down. She was helping out Moose. We came back down, but uh. But that was uh, it was funny because Moose was just you know he's de- the the guy's demanding my lady demanding her demanding a his personal my nurse is now his nurse yeah you keep so, uh, nursing yeah keep keep telling yourself that keep, Trent yeah that, keep nursing yeah listen I, at some point I left that locker room so I don't you, know what you happened. ever see King of the Hill remember uh, what John Redcorn remember that oh Jesus <laughs> don't do, don't put that in my head I'm the only brown man in my life. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for curing my wife's headaches john red corn <laughs> <laughs> uh but no we we you know we got to hang out a little bit pre-show i got to see some of the setup being done it was really cool man it was uh uh the wrestle pro crew was running the show as far as ring crew went uh km was was in charge dude the guy unsung hero of the night oh was my KM. god a round of applause uh sound effect round KM. of applause here for km come on KM, dude. Give it up, KM. KM. You know, not on the show, but definitely on the show. Made made the show happen. It was awesome. But, that, that's uh, no, the got... guy you want on your roster, man. I he wasn't booked for the pay per view. He's been in the company for over a year. I mean, if any, he had the right to be booked on the pay per view, but that look look at that right there. He's doing ring crew when he doesn't have to. I would call KM a veteran. Tukaki Kevin Matthews. That guy has been tearing up the East Coast for well over a decade. I mean, he's been in Impact for quite a long time. It's, you know, just uh, give the guy his respect, man. Give him his props, oh, you know. Still I love, still I, taking I love the, the time to, you know, help with the ring crew. Are you calling me a liar? Oh, I love the dude. He, he was coordinating. He was in charge of making sure that show ran uh, functionally right, I noticed. It was cool, man. But, uh... Now, K, uh, Tukaki, KM, he was he was on, on top of it, man. It was, it was it was cool to see. But, um... Uh, but no, we got to see them kind of setting things up, getting it all ready to go, hammering out the show. And uh, getting it all ready to go before uh, before showtime, and then uh, yeah, the show started. Then I saw you walked in. I think right when Rich Swan's music hit to open the show. As soon I as his music you... hit, literally as soon as his music hit. Yeah, so good timing, man. You uh, you got right in there with Rich Swan's uh, his music, and uh, no, it was Rich Swan. He comes out, and uh, he's got his um, he's got his his mystery. Well, no longer a mystery. But his uh, surprise tag team partner, which was Willie Mac, the Mac, was back, and uh, they're taking on uh, uh, Matt Seidel and All Ego Ethan Page. This was a great opener, man. What'd you think? Uh, that's how you kick off the show, man. Uh, kicked off the show on fire. Uh, now Willie Mac, he was at the Lucha Underground versus Impact show. 
representing yeah. Lucha Underground. But this is his first dance in Impact. And what better stage to, you know, make that real first impression with the Impact audience than Bound for Glory? And the crowd was behind him. The crowd knew who he was. Oh, dude, he um, he definitely he definitely uh, got himself over at that Lucha Parker show, and they were so receptive to him. That guy is impressive, man. The way he moves for a guy his size and that charisma he has, I could I would lo- I could I would see that guy at Impact full time. He was he's fun as hell to watch. Yeah, no, uh, Mike Johnson actually reported today through PW Insider, which I don't like to credit or even mention, but hey, man, he was there. He got he got his his sources. He got his news. Uh, he reported today that Willie Mack will be used as a regular moving forward, so that's good news. Oh, no way, really? That's awesome. Yep. Dude, the guy impressed. He he came out, he came out to show them uh they made a they made a good choice in bringing him in, in for Bound for Glory. So that 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 was awesome to have him. And they he were, picked up they, the they microphone after team. and rocked the crowd, you know? It was cool. Yeah, that was cool too. They had him do the do the the giveaway, the front row giveaway, which was nice. But um no, that was cool, man. Good team. They had a lot of fun. They um and then Swan hit that handspring cutter of his on Sidell and hit that perfect Phoenix splash that he does, picked up the win. But it was it was a good match. Dude, I Ethan Page. And you know, I noticed this too. I was like, man, he looks pretty good because he's usually like not not known to be a body guy, you know. He's he's kind of got a look the dad body. He's been joked about it, you know, he's got the dad body ever since having his kid. But uh, he did note that he lost 15 pounds for that pay per view. But it showed, man. He looked pretty good. Oh, Dude yeah, looked pretty yeah, good. Definitely, definitely. Ego Ethan Page. No, he looked. Yeah, you know, Ego Ethan Page, man. He looked pretty good at that uh, at the show. So yeah, from that man, we. Uh, well, hold on, we hold on. Time out, Zach Morris. Time out. I gotta ask you. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it. You know, I'm gonna pick at this. You know, and ask questions when they're relevant. Um, are you more interested in seeing Ethan Page as Ethan Page? Or are you more interested in seeing him as Chandler Park? So me personally, I th- I think it'd be fun if he did both. To be honest, yeah. I think if they work it and do both, but I, if he's playing a serious heel, then he shouldn't do both. If he's really pushing the Ethan Page thing, I think it's um, I think he should stay serious. Ethan Page. I like Chandler Park too. That was funny, but yeah, for right it, now, Ethan Page is the way to go. Yeah, no, no, you're definitely right. Definitely right, and. uh I'm sure if it ever calls for it, you know, regarding Joseph Park in the future, they'll do a quick little Chandler, you know, cameo or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, Rich Swan and Willie Mack pick up that win. They kick it up to the screen. Uh, King, we allude to King taking out Conan, so putting him out of the match. You know, Conan's down and LAX is freaking out. They go, what the hell happened? You know, what is this bullshit? This and that. So uh, you know, kind of sets a little mystery up for later in the, in the night for that uh, the concrete jungle match. But uh, the next thing that happened, I was a little shocked that when we heard Eli Drake's music hit, man, and I kind of got got a little 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 fluttery feeling because I was like, could this be uh, could this be it? Like this early in the show, is this is this Jericho? Like everybody was thinking it's Jericho, right? And everybody's like, oh man. It's already, you know, I'm thinking already mystery opponent. Holy shit. There was a guy, so think- there was a guy, uh, holding a sign that said, uh, Eli Drake just made the list. And I, I swear when the other person's music hit, I just watched him slowly. He didn't, he didn't do it quickly. Very slowly. I think he thought nobody noticed that he slowly put that sign down. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, he got on the mic, man. And I was like. I start I start justifying to myself. I go, I go, man, I wonder. I wonder if they did it this early just to throw us off because nobody's expecting it this early. But then uh to much to the disappointment of the crowd, we had uh James Ellsworth came out. Uh me personally, I was pretty let down by this. I was not happy, not a happy camper. Uh he got on the mic. And that crowd ate him alive, man. Let they me tell you apart. something, Trent. Yeah. I am not take credit guy. That's not me. I don't take credit for things. I, I'm I'm not that guy. I never jump to the forefront and say, I did that. But Trent, I swear on everything, I started the fuck you James Ellsworth chant. I did it. That was me. I did the first one, got a few dirty looks, and then it caught on and the whole building did it. That was you? You were responsible for that? I swear. Hey. I swear. My buddy Cody <laughs> will confirm it. 
All right. Well, listen, rightfully so, because the, the guy, the guy's terrible. The guy is a complete, the com- I, I don't even understand what that is, why that is what it is. Why is that a thing? I don't know why. Why Why is it a thing? It was but- hysterical. I'll tell you why. It was fucking hysterical because, all right, well, think of it like this, Trent. If Impact were to sell the pay-per-view, it would be such a dumb idea. To ha- and I know it would be a magical, you know, surprise, but think in numbers here. We're, we're, Impact is in the business of selling wrestling. It would be a dumb idea for them to surprise us with Chris Jericho at Bound for Glory. And I, you know, let yeah. me explain here because numbers, think numbers here. How many people the next morning would have bought the pay per view to see that? Nobody, because this isn't the fucking 90s. People would have just went on YouTube and, you know, it would have been good for impact publicity wise, internet traffic, that, that route, it would have been good. But if we're talking strictly selling the show, selling, you know, pay-per-views, it would have just made a lot more sense to have Jericho advertised. You can't have one of the world's biggest wrestling stars unadvertised. I'm sorry. You can't. It just wouldn't make sense. I mean, it would be cool, but not an impacts position. You know, Kyle? You bring up a goddamn good point. I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to go ahead and give you that one. And it, But the reason I say it was hysterical is because they knew we all expected Jericho and the ultimate troll job, instead of getting Chris Jericho, we get the one guy from WWE that nobody wants to see. The fucking lanky-danky jobber, James Ellsworth. Come on, that was hysterical. That was a troll job. We got trolled. It was funny. Impact's yeah, got a yeah. sense of humor. I will I will give you that. I will I will give you that. It was definitely a great troll job. I um nobody saw it coming, that's for damn sure. So <laughs> I'll give them that, man. They nobody saw that coming and um that was fun. I mean, I guess like Eli's response to him is what really made it. You know, he kind of destroyed him. He super destroyed him on the uh on the mic. And so that was that was the best part of it. Yes, then, uh, he did, but Trent Eli Drake needs to watch his mouth when he talks about pizza. All right, bro? You don't talk about pizza like that. I take pizza very seriously. I'm a New Yorker. I've lived in New York my entire life. Don't joke about the pizza, Eli Drake. I I don't joke about your dad's mashed potatoes. Don't joke about my (laughs) pizza, all right? (laughs) He, uh, He got a pizza chant going. The whole crowd started chanting pizza. I thought that was that was a good chant. Having a pizza chanted at a pay per view. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Impact is the home of great chants. I mean, the 20, 2018 alone. Think about it, man. We've had Glory Hall, pizza. <laughs> I, we're just we're the we're the home of good chants. That is true. That is very true. Side note: around this point, I started getting text messages from my friends. I think they zoomed in on me a few times during this and the camera because uh, a couple of buddies of mine who were watching at home. Screen grabbed it and sent me a photo of me on their TV, which was great. I was pretty close. I mean, I had a, I, I was standing up, so I had a good spot. Yeah, and that's but, another that's another uh, can of worms you're opening here. That's another thing I want to bring up to you. Uh, you know, on our show, and we're not really these listeners are new to us, Trent. They don't know about the madness. They don't know about us. They they don't know what goes on. They don't know about all the shenanigans. But long story short new listeners impact loungers weeks loungers. back there was an episode of me and trent's show where trent bought general admission and i bought ringside seats and i spent you know a hundred dollars a pop on ringside seats and i'm rubbing it in trent's face i thought i was the shit I, I thought Trent was going all the way in the back. I thought I wasn't even going to see Trent. I thought Trent was going to be behind a pole somewhere, all the way in the corner. I thought I was going to be the star of the evening right there, ringside. <laughs> Turns out Trent spent, well, how much money did you spend on tickets? What? 30 bucks. 30, 30 bucks. Yeah. Trent spent 30 bucks, but 60 bucks. He got two tickets. Trent spent yep. 60 bucks. I spent 200 bucks. And Trent, not only was he in technically the same row as me i think he had a better view than me yeah i think i did too actually <laughs> i was ringside basically with the with the same second row kind of perspective uh you know you know what i found out though what was interesting the bleachers there were assigned seats did you know that the bleachers the bleachers which i originally thought the bleachers were going to be ga 
the bleachers were all assigned. Where were they the had, bleachers? I don't even remember seeing bleachers. So, yeah, they were so packed. They were the ones right to my right. Like, if you're looking at me, they were right behind me. Okay, Those, okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. And then there were people bleachers. on the balcony above us. Yeah, but apparently the bleachers were assigned seating, which uh, nobody knew. We were initially we were going to sit on the bleachers. And then uh, we looked down on, like, the little panel, and then they got names tagged on them. Yeah, I was, think I think they sold general admission tickets assigned with the gimmick of when they run out, it's standing room only. So a ton of people are going to stand. Yeah, that place was packed, though, man. Hey, for anybody wondering, that place was freaking packed to the to the gills. Because if they uh, didn't, though, people would be punching each other in the face over uh, bleacher seats, you know. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But anyway, yeah, let's continue on over here, huh? We, we you know, we're gonna we're gonna be mixing in the live account, and we were both there live, so we're gonna be mixing ba- that in along with the uh, match perspective. So yeah, you know, Eli Drake tying it up with uh, Ellsworth. I mean, people were shitting on him, but they got two gravy tra- actually. One gravy train planned, then the crowd asked for another one, and he gave us another one. The second one looked, one looked a lot harder. I think he was really pissed. But uh, two gravy trains for Ellsworth. See you out of here. No thanks for coming. And then uh, he's, you know, Eli's in there, and I think he's looking for another challenge. He goes, that was it. And then you had the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame inductee, the new Hall of Fame inductee, Abyss, the monster, making his uh, Bound for Glory appearance. He comes out and takes out Eli, man. Put takes him out one, two, three, and uh, that was fun. It was cool to see Abyss, especially on his Hall of Fame induction weekend. It, the huge pop, huge pop for Abyss. Deserved it. Well, he deserved it. No, he's a man. He's he, dude. Abyss is one of the greatest people in the business, and uh, I think it was like, it was a nice way to get him on the show. It was a nice way to. To, to fit him into everything and say, you know, he's still got his Bound for Glory spot. He's on the show. And, hey, I think Eli did the honors for him. It's kind of – I think I think they love they love him so much that it was like a badge of honor, I'm sure. But uh, we went right to the women's match after this, Kyle. We had uh, – Knockouts. They're knockouts. They're not knock, women. Don't I'm, call I'm, them women. They're knockouts. They're not. I apologize. I apologize. They're knockouts. Truly knockouts. They, they beat the shit out of each other in this match. Uh, Ty took on uh, Tessa for that title. The knockouts championship, and dude, this was a uh, this match solidified to me. I think Tessa, like like Don Callis likes to say, she's not not just the best uh, female Blanchard. She's the best Blanchard in that family. I and think she's I'm a convinced. bitch. She's a bitch, but she's a damn good bitch in the ring because uh, this match was was nuts. I uh, I was thinking I was thinking title change going in. What about you? I thought it I thought it would happen. Well, I think, yeah, you thought that, but you can't be too predictable. And that's a little too predictable. Like, everybody imagined at the end of the show, there was going to be the married couple was going to hold their belts up high. But, no, I think that a little too predictable. Uh, I like Taya, but this is Tessa's time right now. This isn't Taya's time. This is Tessa's time right now. This is Tessa's time to shine. Tessa has the ball right now. No, she did good, man. That this was a there was a lot of false finishes. They beat the shit out of each other, and uh, Tessa retains her Karana, followed by the Magnum Flying Codebreaker, which I didn't know she was calling it that, but that's obviously a uh, tribute to her stepdad, Magnum TA. And uh, she hit it. She got that retention, man. Tessa's still your champ, and a damn good champ she is. Yeah, I gotta address some uh, some yahoos. Some yahoos sitting behind me at the show. It really ticked me off. I turned around and, you know, totally insulted these guys. Uh, during the match, I think people start making uh, jokes about uh, Taya's weight, saying, you know, she did fat jokes, calling her fat. And it's like, man. Are you serious? Yeah. And it's like, you don't appreciate a nice, thick woman. There is nothing fat about Taya except the fat in the right places, if you know what I'm saying, Trent. She's That's a right. gorgeous, beautiful you. woman. And the motto to live by, my friends, thick thighs save lives. They thick do. Thick thighs. And then she's probably saving Johnny Impact's life every night, if that's, that's the right. case. That's right. That's right. So to to the douchebags, douche nozzles sitting behind me at the show, you don't appreciate thick women. You like bony sticks. You like skeletons. Good for you. More thick women for the rest of us. I tell you, man. You know, I also heard a lot of lewd 
lewd comments by guy. I go, come on, man. Are we still doing this? Were they were making such scuzzy remarks to the oh, girls, man, man. Every time I go to a professional wrestling show live, I get reminded why I don't like going to professional wrestling live. And it's yeah, just the dude, fans. I'll, it's I'll, just I'll, the fans. Strictly the fans. Nothing to do with the show. I was pretty uh, disappointed with how, how much of that I heard. I'm like, yeah, maybe one or two guys. Then I'm like, all these all these guys with the with the scumbag jokes. I'm like, there's women sitting by us, man, where we were at. And I'm like, come on, dude, are you serious? Yeah, you but, could you can tell which wrestling fans have never had any female interaction in their 100%. lives before outside of their mothers. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that, I was like listening to that crap, and I go, yeah, this is uh clearly you've never, you know, the last woman you touched was your mom on the way out. You know, that's pretty much. <laughs> That the last woman you've thought because like it was it was so much man I couldn't handle it but anyway it was uh but that was a good match so I'm not gonna take away from the match that was great and uh, we went right right there was no break after that one we went right into uh, Eddie Edwards and Moose so entrances come out Moose dressed in uh he had his dashiki on didn't he did he have his dashiki on no no out? no you're fucking no? it up Trent you're fucking oh. it up. you're fucking up the order of events. He wore the dashiki in the main event when he oh, you know, my bad. came out yeah, with Hayes and Killer Cross. This time he wore the um the all silver outfit with the shades with the oh, hater right. blockers. That's right. And then he had uh he had he had his ladies, dude. Moose was surrounded by the he was he was pimping, dude. He walked out with three ladies. Rolling with the, chicks. He's like the 2018 Godfather. Dude, it, it basically was Godfather in it. But uh he gets in, smooth entry uh ent- injury of the match. New music hitting, you know. I got, I got to critique that music, Trent. I don't like to critique too much. Not a big, uh, you know. I, I don't, I don't like to, you know, knock things, unless I truly, truly uh, am annoyed by it. But let's face it, that new Moose song. I appreciate how he mixed it up, so the crowd, you know, he's a heel now, so the crowd isn't going to be doing the arm gesture and singing along. But the song, the song puts an emphasis on I'm on my own now. I'm on my own now. I'm on my own now. Yeah. You're not on true. your own. You're hanging out with Killer Cross and Austin Aries. You sold your soul to the devil, Moose. That's very true, actually. Well, not what, on your own. Kind of ironic. <laughs> he was more on his own with the old music when he was uh, a face. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, so, uh, plans change. Things change. The card is subject to change. card is subject to change. They do warn you about that. Yep, so, um always. So no, that was uh, but yeah, it, he gets in. Eddie Edwards comes out, and um, it, it was quick too. Immediately, they uh, I just I started seeing a scuffle in the uh, in in the crowd, like on the outside of the ring by my side, and I thought a fan had gotten involved or something. But it turns out it was uh, it's Killer Cross. Killer Cross comes out of the gallery and starts choking the hell out of Eddie Edwards. Pretty like first couple of minutes of the match, and um, they're brawling, they're beating the crap out of Eddie, and uh. Out comes, we hear the music, and we see him, New York's very own. Kyle, who do we see, buddy? Who, who, who walked out there? Tommy fucking Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer. Big pop, ECW chant galore. He came out with the Dusty Rhodes-inspired uh, pants. And, uh, you know, Tommy's become that that veteran, man. Huge ECW f- chant. We're in Queens. Where was the uh, where was the Elks Lodge in Queens? Was it near where Melrose is? Do you do you know where that was? Yeah, or is? Uh, the Madhouse of Extreme. Um, there actually is an Elks Lodge across the street from the old building now, where they still have shows, but it's 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 nowhere near the uh, it's nowhere near the uh, the original, you know, as far as you know, atmosphere and everything else. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's about 10, 10 minutes from the building, just a couple blocks away. Gotcha. Well, it turned into a tag team match. We had Eddie Edwards and Tommy taking on Moose and Killer Cross. This was uh, this was this was pretty hard hitting. A lot of a lot of kendo action in this one. I liked it. I liked uh, I liked how how intense it got. They were they were out to they were out to go. I one thing was uh, did, did you did you think Moose worked a little light in the early part of the match? I thought he seemed like he worked a little bit light in the early part, and then he kind of like found a groove. I don't know if he would just say needed to stretch out or what. What do you yeah, think? No, I guess that's pretty accurate, but uh, can we just talk about how amazing Killer Cross is, please? Dude, dude. Uh, this yeah, let's, was let's... the match that really got me. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed him since he came to Impact, but I didn't fully understand Killer Cross. 
But this match, I guess, uh, you know, in particular because I was there live, but seeing, like, his facial expressions and just the way he's carrying himself throughout the entire, you know, match, uh, performance, whatever you want to call it, uh, dude, the guy is, he's on another level. He's on another level, totally. And, uh, uh yeah, somebody I sitting agree. near me was bitching that he was in the Hitman costume because apparently that's a low keys thing. And low keys great, but, uh, I think it, I think it fits, uh, Killer Cross a little better. I, I, I just, the way he was choking, uh, Eddie Edwards from the crowd and the facial expressions this guy is making, he just looks like the sickest lunatic in the world. Uh, he's amazing. I, uh, I remember when he, I first saw him in the early part of his, to the run here, I was like, this is a whole different level of heel, man. This is not your standard bad guy. This is like he's playing a sociopath. And yeah, like too good, too good, too good, to, to a T. Why is he such an amazing actor? I don't think he is acting. I think Killer Cross really is a psycho. I he, he's 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 another. I'm t- I, I, I tweet. I remember tweeting it, man. I'm like, this guy's next level. He's the next level heel. This is not like your average heel. Wrestlers and are I, supposed to be awful porn actors. Well, why is this guy so good? Dude, he's uh like like I I actually it's funny you mentioned the seeing him live thing. I said the same thing. I'm like, now that I've seen him live. This is a whole different ball game now. I, w- I was convinced. I was like, "This is the next star, man. This is the next guy. This is the guy they got to get get behind. This is your your homegrown guy. You got to get behind Killer Cross. This is this dude is like the the future of the company. I'm calling it. Oh yeah, he's 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 just in his own lane, man. He's in his own lane. Yeah. Uh, this match ended with uh, Edwards rolling up Moose to pick up that win. And he's got to stop licking the kendo stick, man. That's got to stop. My uh. My buddy Cody was just like, he's like, hey man, he, does he do that all the time? He's got to stop doing that. Just a little, uh, a little too, a little too suggestive. Man. If that's how he rolls, nothing wrong with that. But I, I, he's a married man, as far as I know. Just uh, coming out licking the cane, man. It's a little, little, it's, you know, uh, little funky. Yeah. Where, where's your open mindedness? It's 2018. Come on. It's not, I'm not saying that. There's nothing wrong with that, man. There's, there's children in the crowd, all right? Yeah, I agree. Listen, I'm thinking, of, look, here's how much of an adult I am. I'm thinking, look at all, I wonder how many germs are on that kendo stick, and he's sitting there licking it. So irresponsible. Oh, so man. irresponsible. No, I, I'm just thinking gay shit. That, that's all <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking. I guess I guess you're the only thinking, thinking the gay. I guess, but, I, guess, I guess I'm the gay one. Yeah, maybe. That's maybe. Where my, I guess that's where my mind is, if I thought of it like that. I'm thinking germs. You're thinking gay. Oh no, Kyle. We might have to. You know, it might be a closet in your future. You might have to walk out of. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, moving on from that. Moving on. Hey, speaking of which, uh, I got to meet Miguel Contreras, who who prides himself. He's like, I am the biggest gay wrestling fan <laughs> in the world. What a he segue. Pri- what a segue. I, I love I love Miguel though because he Miguel's travels, great. man. He travels. He lets he, he has a sign to let you know he tra- how far that's he travels. That's his gimmicks. I, the the yeah. I traveled sign guy, Miguel Miguel, great guy. Yeah, I, I got to meet him at the Hall of Fame the night before, and uh, he was at the show. He was doing a live uh, Facebook live and on on the Impact Fan Nation page, and um, which I think he runs. He runs that page, and um, no, he's cool, man. He he puts it out there. He's he, he's very proud. He's always like I'm I'm. I'm I am the gay. Yeah, impact. there's nothing wrong with that, man. <laughs> hey, if he's if Miguel if Miguel is into licking kendo stick, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just making the point that you know Eddie's got Alicia. I don't think Alicia wants you know Eddie out there licking kendo stick. But if that's what he's into, hey man, maybe Eddie and Miguel can get together and lick each other's kendo sticks. There's nothing wrong with that. Jesus that's cool. Christ, that's a All fan, right. That's a fan experience. Fuck bingo. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck mini golf. <laughs> well, speaking of mini golf, all right, let's move on here. We got uh, we got the three on three. All right, we got the three on three. Couple of holes in one here. All right, uh, whoo, what a segue that was. But uh, all right, Brian Cage, Pentagon Junior, Phoenix taking on Sammy in the OVE in what was called an OVE rules match, basically, which means no rules, and uh, it's anything goes. So it's OVE rules with no rules. And uh, which is interesting. I think it's a, that that's a that's a toss over to uh, those guys with AEW because they uh, AEW is no count outs, no disqualifications. And that's exactly what OVE rules is dubbed as here. Is no count outs, no disqualifications. Notice how Impact does not like to have like hardcore match 
They don't like to do that. They like to have a special theme name each time they remove the rules. Like, it can never just be, ah, oh, street fight. It's, no, it's a 5150 street fight. It's a concrete jungle match. It's a monster's ball match. It's a Raven's House of Fun match. It's, you know, they, they never, they can never just have, yeah, this is, this is a hardcore match. There's no rules. Yeah, because here's the thing, Kyle. Everybody can have a hardcore match. Anybody can have a hardcore match. Yeah, the, the, the shindy down the street is having a hardcore match. They're not always having a 5150 match. So, hey, it's branding. It's all branding, man. You get to market something. But, uh, oh, all right, so this match. This match was fun. I, personally, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't think it was their best effort, all, three, all six of them. I think I've seen them have better matches. What do you think? Hmm. It took me by surprise, that Trent. Uh, I know. I, I I feel like a dick. I feel like a dick. I'm a walking dick. Think, think But I. But I. And, and, and don't get me wrong. It was a phenomenal match. But I think they've all had better matches against each other. That's the thing that's killing me. They they they've had they've done so many better matches, and I'm like. I feel like this 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 was missing a little something. Eh, not much, not much. Just a little teensy, teeny weeny bit. I guess I guess the chemistry just can't always be perfect. And I mean, when you throw six guys into a ring, you know, it's it's got to be hard. It's got to be hard to you know pull that off. Yeah, listen. It, again, not by not by any means a bad match. I thought it was going to be the show stealer, which it, it I don't think it stole the show, but. Uh, it was a great match. I just, I just, I felt like they've had better ones, but it was, uh, it was good. This was, uh, this was noteworthy for the fact that the OV and Callahan pick up the win. He got the pile driver on on Brian Cage and first guy to pin Brian Cage since uh, he's been an impact. This I think is huge because I remember calling a while ago thinking Sammy is perfect to get that X division title off a of Cage. Is going to be the most believable guy to get that off a of cage, and I think this is where we're going here. I think we're setting this up. We're going for Sammy Cage. Well, it's funny is um, right next to me were uh, two of the New York Giants. I sit, the seat next oh, to yeah. me, literally the seat right next to me. So I was talking to them a little bit, uh, and I mean, like, not not that I was eavesdropping on them or anything like that, or listening to what they were saying, but I totally caught during this match. They were giggling and calling uh, Brian Cage Royce. And the guy was saying, he was like, man, I want some of that. That's way quicker than what I'm taking. <laughs> Are you serious? I swear over my life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I might have just got somebody canned from their NFL contract. I was going to say, it's a good thing you didn't you didn't say the names because. Uh, I don't think some... they're like on the team, on the team. Like they're, uh, I, I'm pretty sure they're, uh, well, they're, they're not. They're not. They're not main eventers. They're not main eventers. Put it that way. Well, they they were guests of Moose because Moose walked them in. But uh, I remember a couple of guys were talking to them. They knew who they were. So I mean, I don't know if they're like rookies or what the deal is, but like, a couple of guys were asking them about stuff. I know there was a couple of jokes. Well, Impact they, clearly didn't know who they are because if you go back and watch, uh, first off, and you know what, man, props to Impact. I mean, they put on a killer show. But let's. Let's not just sugarcoat it and pretend the show was completely flawless. Uh, Trent, if you, I know you saw the show live, and you haven't gotten a full chance to see the entire show played back. But, uh, dude, I don't know if you heard, but uh, they just they had a few flubbles with the camera work during the show. Not too many, uh, but you know it, it happens. But if you go back and watch, even back to the Eli Drake match. When he calls out the New York Giants, it's kind of embarrassing. Like, the cameraman didn't know who to put the camera on. And, like, you see the corner of one of their heads, and the other guy is completely cut out. And uh, oh, wow. they didn't do a good job of, uh, like, w you know, it, regularly when Eli Drake mentions them, the camera should fucking pop on them. Uh, it, sh it should have been addressed a little better. Like, it seemed like there were a lot of... Uh, cooks in the kitchen with uh, just a lack of communication of what was going on. Just a, a small thing that, you know, slipped through the cracks. Interesting. I did, yeah. I, you know, I, I'm going off the live account, so I didn't see the, I didn't see the playback. Yeah. I watched a couple highlights, but um, yeah, it was weird. They like, they, they didn't do a great job of, uh, you know, uh, addressing who these guys were and what they were doing there. You know what I mean? I think, I, I don't think it was planned though. That's the thing. I think I saw Moose walk them in. 
and uh, I don't yeah, think it no, was. And funny. I heard that one of them says, like, "Oh, we're just here for the big homie." After uh, e- after Eli insulted one of them, they were like, "Oh, we we're, we're just here for the big homie." Like I heard one of them say that, and then later on, um, when Moose pushed one of them, you know, I guess you know they're his friends in real life, you know, goofing around, but uh, Moose pushed one of them, and I was thinking, and so was my buddy Cody, like uh, these guys are about to hop the guardrail, but uh, I guess not. Yeah, I, I thought they were going to, but I, I guess you know I don't think they cleared it, and uh, I don't think it got cleared in time, and they couldn't they couldn't get him out there. So, but no, it was uh, yeah, you were right next to him. Yeah, you're right, you were yeah. right there, man. But um, but no, it was uh, it, it was I didn't see the backs. So I'll, I'll watch some of the. I'll look for some of that production flub in that regard. But um, wrapping up this one here, I'm thinking, hey man, I'm thinking Sammy Callahan's getting that exhibition belt. What do you think? I think he's I think he should get it. Oh, kind of needs it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I want to see Sammy dominate Impact, especially since um Impact announced today. Not not no dirt cheaters, not none of you uh, reverse muckrakers, dirt sheet artists, whatever. Clickbait artists, what we were calling them last week. Clickbait artists. Yeah. Impact. Got some hot news. Hot Impact news. themselves announced today that Sammy Callahan has renegotiated and signed a two year deal with Impact Wrestling. That's Sammy awesome. Callahan is locked into Impact Wrestling for the next two years, Trent. You want a guy like Sammy Callahan you on your You need roster. a guy like Sammy need Callahan. Him. You need, you want him there. You need him there. Dude, the guy is the most consistent performer in the industry right now. I think that guy is bananas, legit bananas, how hard he works and how good he is at what he does. The fact that you can get him on your roster, man, that's a, that's a that's gold. That's a gold signing, man. That's uh, he's only done great things in the last year. I think two more years of this domination. Yeah, 100%. and I, I want to see him dominate through the company, and you know, get all the accolades, all the titles, all the achievements, and work his way up to the main slot. And I want to see someday, whether it be next year. Or closer to the year after, I want to see Sammy Callahan as the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. I don't know if you also saw the news that broke about just an hour uh, before we started recording here today. Is uh, they announced that uh, randomly, not randomly, but uh, via partner show, that Impact is going to appear on the Wrestling Revolver show on Wednesday in Dayton, Ohio. Wrestling Revolver is the company that Sammy and the OVE guys run, all the Ohio crew runs that tapes a show every Wednesday night. And uh, they just announced that Impact's going to be in the house. And nice. they got Impact. And it's basically going to be a co-op show nice. on Wednesday, Wednesday night at, in Dayton. So, yeah, if you're in, you're in the Ohio area, check that out. One of my buddies, uh, Nate, who uh, he's a referee for He lives out in Chicago here. And he he drives out to Dayton every Monday to train with, uh, with the Ohio crew. And he's a referee for the revolver. So um, I'm going to find out more details from him, see what's going on. But that just got announced, man, right before we hit the record button today. Nice. But, uh, dude, all right. So from there, um, you know, we uh, we went into we went into uh, probably the most one of the most brutal matches I've ever seen in my life. The OGs, King Homicide Hernandez versus Santana and Ortiz injured Conan. He wasn't there for the tag team championship in a three on two concrete jungle death match. Kyle, you want to break down what a concrete jungle death match is? Well, first, let's just uh, shout out uh, New York's very own Bodega Bams. I know you're not a big hip hop fan, uh, Trent. Are you are you a rap guy? You don't, you don't strike me as much of a rap guy. Are you? A rap guy? Uh, I'm I'm an older rap guy. I like the older stuff. You know the uh, I like the old uh, beatbox type of stuff. Uh, the the classics, if you will. Okay. All you right. I, I, yeah, I hear yeah. You. I hear you. Not 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 big into the new stuff. Neither am I. I'm not big into the new stuff. But I know Bodega Bams. I know Bodega Bams. Uh, Bodega Bams. Him and his Tan Boys squad. They uh, accompanied LAX to the ring. I think uh, they're pretty good friends in real life. They all. Come yeah, from like uh, all come from New York City, different boroughs. I think uh, the LAX boys are uh, Bronx guys. They come from the Bronx, and uh, uh, Bodega Bams and his crew, the Tan Boys, they run Spanish Harlem. So uh, yeah, they uh, they uh, 
did a, a nice little performance there. It was pretty cool. I got to say, though, when all the rappers were jumping up and down on the boards in the ring, uh, I was oh, like, oh, wow, dude. relax here. Don't get hurt. Don't hurt yourselves. Well, let's explain what the ring looked like during after the after the pre- preparation for the Concrete Jungle match. Oh, you want to break you that gotta, down? You got to break it down, Trent. You got to break it down. So, a Concrete Jungle death match. It was a death match, correct? Yes. A Concrete Jungle death match. You remove the canvas. You remove the the padding under the ring that keeps all the wooden planks together, and you got nothing but steel and two by fours. Nothing but. And the the. Uh, turnbuckles were also gone. <laughs> oh yeah, and they they kept the ropes, but they removed the turnbuckles. And also the little padding that goes over the turnbuckle hook that goes to the post; those were gone too. Everything was gone. Yeah. The, the the ring was stripped down to just the wood, which I don't know if you could see from your vantage point, but that wood looked like it was sliding and slipping around. And, oh my uh, god! Uh, it was there was and there was. Did you see the one plank in particular that had oh everybody god. scared from the beginning? Dude, the one plank. So, okay, so to paint the picture for the folks at home, there was one plank right in the <laughs> middle of the ring that just exposed up. Because I think when the guys were jumping, this thing just lodged itself up, and it was stuck. Like, and you know, it's a it's a wooden plank. This is a long wooden plank. This is a hard thing. No, you cannot be falling on this. This this is gonna ruin vertebrae. And I saw the referee trying to fit it back into place. He couldn't get it. I saw. I mean, during the entrances and the, the the intros and whatnot, and I saw a couple of wrestlers trying to casually step on it a little bit, and um, they got in there. And man, last minute, like I, like right before the match started, I think I forgot who it was, but somebody kind of like on the corner of the ring kind of pulled some stuff around. Referee gave a step, and uh, and and they just got that thing down, man. They got it down and ready. But that was freaking me out. Was it the rogue plank? The road plank got uh, got taken care of though, man. Right before actually, we started. um, I I forgot. Uh, Josh and uh, uh, Josh and Don actually um mentioned the plank on commentary. They actually did mention it. Did they really? Yeah, oh, okay. they did. They yeah. they did take notice to the plank. They because I think they, that was their way of getting word to the truck. Like somebody tell somebody to fix that plank. Yeah, yeah. Because so, so I would do it. My buddy Cody pointed it out immediately. Like somebody's gonna get really hurt on that. But thankfully they got it under control. But man, what a not match. many things were under control during this match. It was insane. They killed each other. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Uh, superplexes. Hernandez taking the superplex onto wood boards with no cushion underneath was one of the most brutal things I've ever seen. Uh, he's a heavy guy. He's a heavy, heavy guy. And he took a lot of, a lot of slam onto that wood. So her net, yeah. I mean, <laughs> He's just Trent boinged yourself. This is becoming a new thing. <laughs> Slammed on that wood. Slam. He took a lot of slam. Uh, dude, they were beating the shit out of each other. There was so much brutality in this match, uh, to the point where it was like, I mean, the, the some of the some of the planks were sliding a little bit. I mean, my girlfriend was freaking out. She thought something was gonna happen. Santana went for a running dive. I thought this is a, this guy's gonna this is this is where the wood slips. This is it. Yeah. But no, everything was fine. I mean, everybody, dude, even Hernandez did a super dive over the uh, the top. I couldn't believe all, and and everything held up, man. So I'm I'm glad everybody was safe. You know, the cameras didn't do it justice, Trent. But uh, no. Eddie Kingston, when he dove, I saw it perfectly, dude. Sitting right there, he went face first into the guardrail, like hard, like he hit his head hard on the guardrail. Yeah, I, I could tell he did too. You're right. It looked uh, it looked brutal, man. He didn't really cushion it, but they uh they beat the shit out of each other, man. I mean, her, do you see uh, Hernandez had this wicked gash over his like immediately. immediately. Yeah, he was he was busted open right right from the vet. Oh man, it 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 took him down hard. Um, but uh, man, it was uh it was good, man. Uh, it was a lot of uh there was a lot of anger in this match, but um, but then we had uh you know King was about to end it. He was he was going for it, but then uh, Conan he he we run, he comes down to the ring, they exchange a couple of shots, and then Conan got the upper hand, and uh, he sent King through a table in the corner, and then they followed it up with a street sweeper, and then took the win on King. That was great. Uh, I, I didn't expect uh, they got me. I, I didn't expect Conan to you know crash uh, towards the end of the match like that. I thought I thought they wrote him out. I thought strategically. Conan's too old. He can't work, uh, you know, in ring. 
I, I figured they, you know, just wrote him out. And I thought, I thought somebody was going to show up to replace him, but I, you know, I was not expecting uh, Conan. And another thing, I thought Richie was going to come out. I really did. I thought that. Did you? <laughs> I did. I thought that Richie was going to, uh, you know, get his, uh, to show the world that he isn't dead and, uh, you know, whatever it was, you know, s- s- hit him with the cane, hit him with the chair, whatever, whatever he could do to uh, get his revenge. But Man. I think oh. that uh, answers the question that <laughs> Richie died. <laughs> I, think, I thought Richie's alive. They alluded to him being alive. No, he's dead, man. And how come? Uh, how come? Yeah. During the entrance, uh, when uh, Bodega Bam's like, "This is for Conan. This is for Conan." What about Richie? Conan. Conan has been beat down many times in his career. Conan can take a beating. That's just a not. That's a. That's a good day's work right there. A child. A child was brutally murdered. How come nobody's? Where are the police? How come Eddie Kingston hasn't been apprehended yet? Well, well Richie uh, I'm lived in Richie Canada. Trent. I'm not over it. Richie lived in Canada, and clearly the uh, LAX don't care about Canada. Richie was a boy. He was a child, okay? Just a little boy. Just a little boy. <laughs> yeah, he, he, had a bright future, he had a bright future of gangbanging in his, ahead of him, but he <laughs> got cut short. They, they took that away from him, Trent. They took... They took gangbang away from him. <laughs> a short life filled with drugs, violence, and they, they took it away from him. Poor Richie. He he. Ne- the kid never had a shot. Yeah, the kid never had a shot. Justice for Richie. But but uh, I remember hearing when when uh, when uh when uh they were they were yelling, "This is for Conan, for Conan." Some guy behind me goes, "He's not fucking dead," and I'm like, "Yeah, he's re- <laughs> he's not dead. What are we relax a little bit? He just got beat down. He's still he's sitting on a couch. They Richie. showed him, put him on a couch. Should have been for Richie." Yeah, it should have been, you know, the retrospect, it should have been for freaking Richie. For, but hey, it wasn't for Richie, it was for, it was for Conan. And Conan, I was really hoping, man, I, look, I don't know about you, I was really hoping that Conan was going to bust out the Rolling Thunder clothesline. I'm like, man, I wonder if those old hips, that old dog can can just do one roll for his last match. A little just tequila get one sunrise, a little, te- a little tequila. I mean, I was hoping he he busted something out, but I, I think, uh, I think he's too too old, man. He's too broken down. The the OG, he's the OG, and he's the OG is hurt. And uh, but no, it was a good match, man. They celebrated. They were, it was a hero's welcome, you know. They were that's hometown. Those are your boys, man. Those are New York boys. Yeah, dude. I just I in my head, you know, I could hear the Eagles playing in the city as, as they as they danced as the victory. You know, I, I went to Coney Island the night before, the day before that, and I was uh, that was all that was in my head the whole time. That was it. True. Trent got back to Coney Island. I, I made it back to Coney. I, uh, but anyway, that's another that's a whole other podcast. We should do a Warriors podcast, podcast someday. Yeah. But uh, we should do yeah, a but, podcast called the Whole Other Podcast, where every, yeah, like everything idea. we put in that box gets answered in there. You know, it's the just, whole other just, podcast. I just randomly reach in and pull out the topic and go. That's, that's it. actually a hell, hell of an idea. Actually. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but I think we're onto something. I'm sorry, Impact Lounge listeners. There. They're unsubscribing by the dozens and dozens. BQ is regretting his decision right now yeah. to put us on because we, we just killed your we just killed your channel. BQ, we're oh, sorry. Geez. BQ, though, I can say though. BQ, hold on. There's nobody else. No two other guys. No two other guys who are there live. They're doing this, That's and right. we're doing it. You ain't getting that from anybody else. Uh, so, dude. So from there, while they fixed the ring and put the ring back together, um, we went to the screen and we had the mini movie. We had Allie in the undead realm looking for Kira, and it, it was your it was your what has become a standard bizarre movie that Impact does. And um, Allie's in the undead realm. She's she's killing. She's got an axe. She's legit killing people. She's she's slitting throats. Uh, she killed a couple of the bridesmaids, and she even stabbed Sue Young in the throat. But then uh, Su Young, you know, regenerates because she doesn't die. You're in the undead realm. And, uh, you know, it goes back and forth. She finds Kira. She's running out with Kira. She uh, they try to run. They can't leave the undead realm. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention Father James Mitchell is the guy who put him there. He's the one who gave him the uh, the passage. It's funny, though, Kyle. I met with him. Uh, I, I met him the night before at, at Abyss's thing. And I was telling him it's good to be back on good to be back on TV or good to see you back on TV. 
And he goes, oh, yeah, that was, that was some weird shit we did, me and Allie. And uh, it was bizarre. He goes, uh, if you think that was weird, wait till you see what we do at the pay-per-view. And I go, what? He goes, it's uh, it's even weird for me, you know, the way he talks. So he, uh, that was weird, man. What did you think about this? Oh, man. Uh, you know what? Impact over the past couple of years, uh, everybody goes directly to the uh, broken stuff. And, yeah, I'm sure that's probably where it uh, started, you know, the the genesis of it all. But uh, after that, they proved themselves again with the uh, Scott Steiner, Josh Matthews versus Joseph Park and Jeremy Borash. I miss, I miss Jeremy Borash. I don't like to say his name. I get, get a little upset. I miss JB. But uh, they proved themselves with that match. Uh they can do this. There's the weird little, uh, I don't know what to call it. We need a name for it. I don't know what it is, but uh, that just the with their weird style of uh, production, the way they, uh, now I guess, you know, we had the Broken Universe, now we have the Undead Realm, and uh, a report yesterday came out, um, I forget which uh, clickbait artist put it out there, but they said that uh, Impact is... Uh, aiming to do some sort of like undead realm match somewhere in December. I don't know why they listed December specifically. So we'll see if that goes anywhere, but apparently the undead realm is a thing to stay. And, uh, I guess that's where when Sue young puts you in the coffin, you go to the undead realm. I like it. I mean, build, build that little gimmick, but, uh, and if James Mitchell stays a part of it, I'm even more into it. Hey, as but, long as James Mitchell is on my TV, I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm a happy camper too. I love That's him. But it. yeah, we had the return of Rosemary in this undead realm. Welcome back, Pop of the Night. Oh, nearly. Back. I would say Pop of the Night, man. People freaked out. People freaked out of seeing Rosemary on the screen again. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, let's well, at least from my perspective, uh, I. F- feel like while this was airing um i mean the ring crew was going crazy you know uh putting stuff you know uh you know cleaning up the ring putting everything back together but i feel like a lot of people in the crowd didn't really know what the fuck was going on because we couldn't hear it that good yeah you had to actually listen to people were i mean you know it it got placed as the kind of the take a break match because it was the intermission almost in a way, because he had to set the ring back up. So I think people didn't really, it was hard for people to understand what was going on. Like you really had to pay attention here. But I think once people saw Rosemary it tied it all back in, well-made movie, another Kevin, uh, Kevin Sully, Kevin Sully, Kevin Sullivan, Sullivan, their, um, their producer, AKA Kevin Sully, uh, another one of his classic, uh, productions, man. They, they do some good stuff with these videos. Yeah. yeah good work. He's a nasty video editor. Dude, his, him and his team are fantastic. He actually got a shout out uh, from Abyss at the Hall of Fame because uh, the tribute video they did was phenomenal. And then uh, Ke- you 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 wrote something about it, but didn't didn't Kevin Sullivan personally tweet it back to you? Did I see that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I said I said I hope you guys you know I hope that uh, that tribute video makes it on YouTube so I can watch it again because I I'm like it was an absolutely beautiful video and. Um, and he's like, you know, he thanked me for it. He said, I appreciate your kind words. And he sent me a link to Vimeo. He's got a host on Vimeo, which is uh, a lot. Of, a lot of film guys like Vimeo. It's a little more HD, from what I understand. So yeah, yeah you can um, you can upload uh, your 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 actual upload is uh, a higher quality than you can reach on YouTube. It's for it's for the big HD stuff. Yeah, dude, it's uh, you could tell too when you watch something really good on Vimeo, you can really see it. But he uh, sent you the uncut version. Nobody saw that. Yeah, nobody saw that, man. It was pretty cool. It was a long video, though. I will say, at the Hall of Fame, that was a long, that was a long video, man. But yeah, all right. So picking it back up, we had uh, so yeah, Rosemary is back, but she did tweet something. She tweeted that uh, she goes, she said something like, "Not yet, but soon." You know, the time waits for no one, or something like that. So I think it's. Maybe we won't see her next week. Maybe not the week after, but soon. Soon. Uh, after that video ended, we had a, a commercial, Kyle. We had a commercial revealing the next uh, big show. And that was going to be no, at none other than the Asylum. Back the, to the Asylum, baby. Nashville, Tennessee. Where it all started. Home of Cheeks, the Johnsons, SEX. We're going back, baby. Oh, 
the original Asylum is getting impact on January 6th for a uh, pay-per-view and then a TV taping. And, uh, man, how about that, huh? Like, when they put that in there, it's called Homecoming. So when they put it in there, and they had a bunch of old clips, too, which was kind of cool to see. But, hey, man, for me... This is this is classic, Kyle. I already got I already got a caravan of guys who want to go down down to uh, Nashville uh, for the show because, dude, I watched every single Nashville pay per view, the ten dollar pay per view. I watched every single one. Oh, nobody's questioning that, you weirdo. We know you watched them all, and you still have the videotapes, each and every one marked. We know, we know. V- VHS. <laughs> but v- I think that this is very important, Trent, because I feel like. In the process of rebranding, sometimes, you know, we forget about the loyal TNA fans that, hey, were never bothered, that that never wanted things to change, that, hey, never had any issue with the product. The people that have been around since day one, and, you know, we put so much effort into we're not TNA anymore. This is kind of like, uh, you know, hey, hey, we didn't forget about you guys. We didn't forget about our history. Yeah, listen, it's almost like you kind of need to touch those uh, touch those history points to let people know that that you know, hey, we're, we we still, even though we are different, we know where we came from, and we want to yeah. show people, hey, the, the asylum is rooted in this company, man. Especially cool, when though. you're still selling the GWN actively. I think uh, I think that yeah, that's that's huge for it. Imagine. Imagine the buildup that's going to happen to this. You're going to get to use all that old NWA TNA stuff. <laughs> that's going to be cool. And this is a good spot. I need to apologize. It's like the third time I've coughed on this podcast. I'm just getting over a very bad cold. I apologize for that. Very, very congested. Very congested. Take some Sudafed. Go to bed. Yeah. Take a, take a nap. Call, call, call mom. Take a nap. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got to say, though, um. Actually, it's too early. I'm going to save this statement for the very end. Keep going. All right. So uh, that's that's our big uh, that's our little that's our little semi intermission that they did. And uh, you know, after that, that was it, man. We have built up this show at that point, and from there, we went to the main event. Now, here's the thing: going to the main event of Austin Aries, who was accompanied by Moose and Cross uh, against Johnny, who ended up coming out with Taya. We uh we all know about the the tension leading up to this, a lot of tension. Kyle, there's been a lot of shit talking. You, you didn't even talking. really talk about your Hall of Fame experience the night before, Trent. Let's uh let's tangent again. I'm uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll work it into this because it's okay. actually a perfect perfect to set up for this main perfect. event. Perfect. I know. Uh, you. I know you very well. Beautiful ceremony. Uh, Jim Mitchell's induction speech was absolutely perfect. He even the devil started crying a little bit, and uh. Abyss gets up there, gives one of the best speeches I've ever heard. One of the one of the most sweetest guys ever. He revealed something in his speech that really was very interesting, which I don't think a lot of people know. He uh, he dedicated it to his mom, and he said, "This one's for my mom. I want to thank my mom. Her name is Rosemary." And that light went off in my head. There you go. At the creative table, uh, Abyss named uh, Courtney Rush's Impact character after his mother. That's awesome. Did That's you know sweet. about that? I didn't know about that. No, I just put it together during the uh, the Hall of Fame speech like you did. Yeah, it was uh, that was awesome. And uh, he, he, he gave a really dignified speech, man. And then uh, I noticed about, about like halfway through Jim Mitchell's speech, um, or actually towards the end of Jim Mitchell's speech, Austin Aries snuck in. He was late, and he kind of was coming to people. People started making a little bit of commotion. He's like, shh, shh, you know, hey, no, no, don't bring attention. I'm just coming. I'm just coming in. He gets in. He sits, <laughs> sits in the front row, puts his bag down, sits in the front row. And, uh, you know, the Abyss does his speech, and it's done, and they start wrapping up. And then Josh is, uh, you know, pitching the uh, the Twitch feed. And, and he, Ari, he, you see Josh look at Austin Aries, and he says, do you want to – what we want to say something? And he goes, yeah, let me, let me talk for a minute. So he gets on the mic, Austin Aries, and he starts cutting a great tribute to Abyss. Then he starts saying some really nice things to Abyss about loyalty. And then he says, uh, makes you think about perspective, you know, things this week got a little tense. I said a lot of mean things online 
And, uh, you know, we both said a lot of things. We took our tweets down and, you know, in a, in a day where, on a day where, uh, trip make, putting a tribute for a, one of the most respected people. It made me think about myself. Then he twisted. He goes, until I saw, um, you know, you two, and he starts looking at Johnny and Taya about, you, you know, you two get on TMZ and disparage me and this and that. And all of a sudden, dude, and <laughs> Man, Johnny to make it all about himself. <laughs> and Johnny, well, Johnny says that he goes, Johnny goes, it's not always about you. And he goes, oh, it's not about you. And man, the F bombs start flying there in the, I mean, it is a melee. Abyss is in the ball. They're knocking down the back. It is, it is chaotic. Um, so many F bombs. Josh is like, cut the feed, cut the feed. They cut the feed out. They are brawling for minutes after the feed is off, uh, destroying chairs, podiums. Things went nuts. Uh, somebody threw a bag, like I think Austin Aries' bag got thrown. Uh, it hit a fan in the bag. I think it na- nailed him by accident. Um, it was, dude. It was a, it was a brawl. So much crap being spewed, man. I couldn't believe how much shit was said. And um, they broke it up. Aries was, I mean, I, you know, initially I'm thinking, okay, you know, we're selling the show. It's kind of weird to do it at the pay per view. I thought it was a little strange. Uh, but then when it kept going, I don't. This was to me, man. I'm thinking, shoot. This is a total shoot because it was cut from the feed. It never got aired. And I saw Austin Aries a few minutes, like maybe about 20 minutes later and downstairs and that place. And he looked very pissed off. And I, and uh, like he had a look on his face, like (laughs) that, you know, I'm fucking heated. So it was, uh, it was bad, man. It was bad. I tried talking to him. I said, Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And he just, Shot me one of the meanest looks ever and gave me a fist bump. And that's about it. No, no words. But because uh, I just talked, I just saw him a few weeks ago. We talked about had a really good conversation actually. But uh, all he was seeing was red, man. But uh, so look, these two got into a legit brawl before <laughs> the night before, and they've been talking. They've been taking really deep jabs at each other all week, and then the match starts. Then we have this match. Austin Aries called Ty a husky. By the way, called her husky. He called her husky, and, and then they called him. Those people, and then they called him short. That's what set him off again. They called him short on TMZ, and that was it. That's all he needed to hear. He saw red. But uh, then this match, Kyle. Do you recall how tense the beginning of this match was? Oh my god, it was a fight. It wasn't a match. It was a fight. It was. This was a shoot fight. It was a fight. I mean, I saw chokes, punches, brutal kicks. At one point, I heard Austin Aries choke him and say, do you want to go to sleep right now? I'll do it. Like, he said that to him. And, like, dude, it was brutal. It was it was brutal. They, they were – I was close, man. They were, st- they were they were hard way hitting each other. They were choking each other down. And, uh, dude, I don't know. You can kind of see the, the point where it became a wrestling match again. But, man, you tell me, Kyle. What do you think? Oh, man, I don't know what to think. It's crazy. It's like, I don't know. It's like they're doing something differently here where they're trying so hard, firing on all cylinders just to convince you that, hey, maybe this is real. And it's weird. I I, I don't know what to think, man. Uh, It's just different. They're doing something different. I, uh, it's a strange approach. It's just different. It's cool. It's unique. It's light. It's getting everybody talking. It's uh, it's the way wrestling is supposed to be. Adding in that realism, something that you know, for example, the WWE hasn't done in years. Probably why their product is suffering so bad. But Impact has taken uh, a lead in adding realism to this storyline uh, to the point where they brought TMZ into it. Like ah man, like. I, I don't know what's real and what's fake. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> it's, I, it sounds embarrassing. I'm getting worked. I'm Mark getting worked over here, but that's okay. I pay to get worked. I pay to yeah. be worked. That's why I give them my money. That's the whole point of being a fucking wrestling fan. Listen, I, I don't think enough people are fans nowadays. You know, we, people try to be too smart. Uh, I'm glad I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know anything about what's real, what's not. All I know is 
this match was brutal as hell. It was actually a pretty damn good match. They started working at some point, and it became a pretty good match. And, um, I mean, they, I'm sure they had their, their things worked out, but, man, they, they beat the piss out of each other. It was back and forth. And um, you had uh, Aries went for a suicide dive at one point. He nailed Taya. Did you catch that? Uh, how could I miss it? Uh, it was right in front of you. It was insane. It was insane. But uh, the whole the thing that really caught me was Moose pointing and laughing at her. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if the camera caught it, but uh, Mo- as soon as she got hit, Moose just points at her and just starts laughing. But I thought it was weird how after she gets hit, this guy, Johnny Impact, he just continues the match. He doesn't he doesn't get out of the ring to go make sure she's okay. This motherfucker finishes the match. What kind of good guy does that? Hey, he's focused on that belt, man. What, the, the wife's tough. She, hey, she's a wrestler. She could take it. Belts over bitches. Belts over bitches. And Johnny Impact proved that once again. That's it. Uh, belts so, over bitches. This, <laughs> this this was also the match where Moose came out in the dashiki and the white coming to America dashiki that he uh, that he dubbed on his Instagram was coming to America. Amazing. This is, he was amazing. He was in a Moose was in a dashiki and Killer Cross looked like a psychopath. Uh, what a hell of a crew this is! I love their music too, by the way. Their entrance music is great. Uh, but the thing is, though, Trent, back to that dashiki. Where does Moose's crazy outfits go from here? I feel like. I feel like that was the peak, the dashiki. I don't think I don't think I, I'll see what he has in store for us, but I don't think Moose's outfits could get any more ridiculous. I mean, they're taping in New York, so he's gonna probably do some New York themed stuff, and then uh, when they go to Nashville, I'd love to see Moose come out as a cowboy because that'd be hilarious. <laughs> but uh, some southern twang to his outfit. I mean, think about it. That'd be that'd be pretty funny. But uh, we had um, at the end here, Impact Johnny Impact. He hits Aries with his very own finisher, the Brain Buster. Hits him with uh, Starship Pain. Wins the match, new world champ. And uh, Aries gets up immediately. No cell. Looks at the balcony where Ed, Don, and Josh are at. Scott was in the other corner, I noticed. And uh, says something to him. Pretty upset. And they just kind of wave to him. and say, they, I hear this. I look at him. They're like, bye. See ya. And he walks out, not selling a single thing that just happened, flips off the crowd, and that was it. He was out of there. It's confusing. It's so confusing. I don't know. I See, I'm so intrigued. Like, you have to. You have to tune into Impact on Thursday. You just have to. How are they going to explain it? How are they going to attempt to explain it if they even try? What happened? Did he take a dive? Was this all fake? Is wrestling fake? Is this a wrestler admitting wrestling's fake? It, did did it impact talk him into taking the dive for like? Because how, how could they explain this? How could they explain this? You know they got they have nothing so far. I haven't heard anything. I mean everybody's in speculation mode right now. Yeah, and, and everybody. One of Austin Aries promos uh, before the match. Uh, you know, there was a few uh, Alicia interviews there. Uh, I don't think he caught all of them, Mr. Trent. But there was one in there where uh, Austin Aries said, quite frankly, I don't trust the management around here. And that was before the main event match. So oh, really? they were going in a certain direction. This was this they this was in the this was in the cards. This was in the cards all day. I think I think even if it was a, a work, I think it turned into a shoot pretty quick. It became a part shoot also. It's a and work shoot, bro. It's a work shoot, bro. Blur the lines, bro. Work shoot, bro. Blur the lines, bro. I invented it, bro. All I know is everybody's talking about it. It's been a it's been the buzz. I've gotten several texts. It's been the buzz of of wrestling for the last couple of days. If it's real or not, nobody knows. So um, Russo would it's appreciate a, this one. This, I think I, he would. I don't he's, even he's, think Russo could could pull it off this smoothly. Russo's Russo's jobs usually go haywire. I don't even think he could pull this one off. I think Russo would, bro. I think he would give it like a swerve award or something. You know. I mean, listen, I, but I think he. I think this is up his alley though, for sure. Bro, work shoots, bro. He loves this. This is this is this is what Russo wanted wrestling to turn into. I think it's he. It makes sense. What the everything else? The cat's so out of the fucking bag. It's in Canada by now. You know what I mean? Like, 
you got to do something different. If it's a work, hey, man, I'm all for well, it. it depends I like- how far you go because, like, it depends how far you go. I don't want to totally uh, change the subject, but th- I'm not because it's relevant to what we're talking about. But I don't want a show where it's like everybody knows the wrestling's fake, but here's what happens between the human beings in between the fake wrestling. I don't want to go too far from wrestling. Wrestling is still fucking wrestling. Let's not forget that, all right? The wrestling has to stay the wrestling. I don't want to. I don't want to go on the show and fully acknowledge all of this is fake. But here's what's real: the reality show style stuff of what happens to the people when they're not wrestling. So that I think that's where Vince wanted to go with a lot of his stuff, and I think they're kind of playing with that. Just, but just not going there. They're just playing with it, you know. Just a little sprinkle, a little sprinkle of you know blurring the lines. But I and I think it's great. But I don't think you should blur the lines too much. I don't think this should go too far. But I, I, we have no idea where it's going, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, that's true. We don't, and that that keeps us wondering and watching and seeing what kind of happens next, man. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, Did I'm, you catch I'm, the uh, Brian Pillman loose cannon rumor that was going around the internet today about this angle? I saw a little bit of it. I didn't fully read the article, but I saw that there was a rumor. Uh, but here's here's my problem with that, though. If that's the case, somebody already ruined it. I mean, you already put that out there now? Like, come on. Well, that was the thing. That's what I was thinking. It's like, it's almost like a tribute to that, you know, a play on that sort of angle where, uh, all right, so back in the day, uh, he left WCW to hop into ECW to, I guess, one day go back to WCW. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away and it never, you know, turned out like that. But uh, I'm thinking in my head, they're going to have Austin Aries go on to like ring of honor or something like that and trash impact wrestling. But then when everybody least expects it, have Austin Aries pop back on impact, you know, play, you know, his own spin on the loose cannon, uh, gimmick, but that doesn't work in 2018 because we have the internet. And like you just said, somebody ruined it. It's, it's all out there already. So now Impact has to reshuffle the deck, and uh, I'm just so curious and intrigued and on the edge of my seat to see where the fuck they go with this. I, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm lost for words. At a loss for words. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm curious too. I don't know where, uh, where it's headed, but listen, I'm, I'm in for the ride either way. I think it. it's. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you, you don't count. You're always in for the ride. I, I, I've been since day one. You're, and what do they call you, fair weather fans? No, I'm not fair weather at all. I am. I am all weather. Yeah, all weather fans. You know, I'm, 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 I'm like the a, other way around. Sorry, yeah. But for, for the the fair weather fans, they're on the edge of their seat too. Trent, you always are. But always. This always. this has got everybody. This is, I never this, leave this the edge. This has got the wrestling world by the balls. I never leave the edge of the seat. I stay on the edge. And quite frankly, I mean, the guys, the guys on Survivor right now. All right. Johnny, Johnny's got the buzz right now. He's the guy right now. I think they made a great company decision putting the belt on him. You had to. Yeah, the guy, the guy's hot. He's he's getting tweeted out. People are talking about him on on TMZ, the news. I was and on it, Snapchat uh, last week, and uh, uh, do you use Snapchat, Trent? Once in a while, I'm more right, of an you Instagram know that story one guy. Awful. Uh, after your friends list, that very last tab, it's like the armpit of the internet where it's like news headlines about the Kardashians and like oh, yeah, things yeah. like that. I, I call it the armpit of Snapchat because that's what it is. And uh, on there, they have something called Awesomely Bad Jokes. And uh, it's just some stupid little show where uh, people try to read each other bad jokes back and forth and, uh, you know, try try not to laugh and uh, or try to get them to laugh. And... Uh, I saw one last week, and it was Johnny Impact, and his name on the headline was Johnny Impact. Trent, do you know how often wrestlers are in the mainstream on social media? Yeah, that's pretty rare now, man. Not quite often, not in the mainstream. This was on the headline. This was on the front page of Snapchat. This was very mainstream, and it showed me that well, Johnny Impact, He's he's got potential. He's... He's the guy you need to give the ball to. He's everywhere. There you go. See, that's the thing. That's the idea behind it. And he, Austin he, Aries is the best heel in wrestling. So come on. There you go. Listen, I, I love Austin Aries. I mean, this whole thing that's going on, 
what, until I find out what it is, look, I'm a fan of the guy. I think he's, I think he's a damn good talent. We'll see what happens with though. We'll see where it goes. But that Kyle was bound for glory, huh? What do you think? A uh, great show. Impact Wrestling has the best roster anywhere in wrestling right now. Best collection of young, hungry talent. Um, the show has this uh, edgy ECW uh, vibe to it. Uh, the show is awesome. The show itself, Bound for Glory, not talking about the state of the company, but the show particularly was great. Um but I have one one issue with it that I told you I was going to save for the end of the show. Do you know? Right. Do, can you guess where I'm about to go? I'm trying to think. I don't know. What, what issue would it be? This no new can- regime is letting me down in one way. Now I'm not picky. I'm not. I'm not being that guy. I love what Scott and Don are doing. Uh, they've done more than any of the past regimes that I could think of in so long. Uh, I love the creativity of the show. I love the booking. I love uh, the the writing in the show. You know, it feels very edgy. The promos are great. I love their work. So I, I can't I can't say that enough. So don't listeners don't think I'm you know trying to nitpick or hate, but I can't help but realize they're letting the X division slip, and it just seems to be a problem with every regime that steps in. Why is it so fucking hard to book the X Division? How come there was no X Division match on this pay-per-view, Trent? Don't give me no bullshit. There's no there's no excuse. There should have been an ultimate X match. There should have been something. And week to week on television, yeah, Brian Cage is X Division champion right now, and he's great, but uh the X Division doesn't feel the way it's supposed to. And I was no. a little let down because I thought this was the regime that was going to correct that. And so far, I'm very dissatisfied with the X Division, Trent. I, I agree. That was my gripe going into the show. That some of my, my solo reviews I did with uh, when you couldn't join were about the fact that there's no X Division match. I don't know why. You could have just done the Sammy and Brian Cage thing as an X Division match, and OVE could have taken on Lucha Brothers. It would have been fine. Yeah, you got you got to put just, spotlight on the division that built TNA. You have. I just I just don't get why it couldn't be a match. I I don't. It it made no sense for this one to be a three on three as opposed to splitting those two off for next match. Um, I know. I guess I they were going with like Sammy making the pin and then making himself a worthy contender. But at the same time, it's like, dude, on the on the pay per view, we didn't have an X division match. That bummed me out, man. And you're right. I feel like. Nobody has booked it as strong as the – and listen, people might hate him, but that Russo and Conway era and, and that or that Russo and Jarrett era in the early days, no one's booked the X Division strong like those two eras um, since since those guys have been, have been away from like the head of creative. I mean maybe it was the time. you know, Maybe it was a place in time. Like I just – when I think of TNA and what brought me to TNA and uh, all of my buddies growing up that got into TNA the same time I did, what drew all of us into it was the X Division because we wanted to see the X Division. Because all right, think of it like this: because I'm I'm putting myself back. Uh, I'm a lot. I'm I'm a little younger than you, Trent. Uh, I'm putting myself back. I when TNA came on Fox Sports and me and all my friends discovered it. What I can specifically remember, he's the, I was in like sixth grade at the time. I can remember what drew us to it was the X Division, and it was specific to us that we couldn't see this on WWE because we were we were still kids that loved WWE. I don't get nothing, nothing twisted about it. I was still watching WWE every week, but I remember me and my friends as young kids that you know just casual wrestling fans that weren't all hooked up to the internet we weren't brainwashed by things we read online we liked what we saw you know genuinely and i just remember we loved the x division because we couldn't see it anywhere else and that to me it, it was the i it gave tna its identity trend and we can't forget that, that, that I, agree. I agree and it's always been a struggle and I, why is it so hard to, you know, just manage some cruiserweight wrestling on your TV show? But their TV show is filled with great cruiserweight wrestling. The Pentas, the Phoenixes, the Christ Brothers. They have they have some of the best cruiserweight high-flying style wrestling in all of professional wrestling. Why is it so hard to organize it and put spotlight on it in its own division? I just don't get it. 
I feel like they need an X division, former X division guy to be on the creative team. Like, you know what? You bring Jerry Lynn, bring him in. Jerry Lynn, uh, amazing red, whoever, you know, somebody that gets it. Somebody that was there. Chris, Chris Saban, uh, Oh. Alex Shelley just Alex retired. Alex Shelley, I think Bring he just in. retired. It'd be a yeah. good role for him to manage and Bring him in. Uh, I know uh, Helms tried to save it uh, two years back, but uh, I don't think it ever you know, came to fruition. But it just feels like, man, stop Hel- letting it slip away. It helped build the company. And it's unfortunate that I'm spending, you know, this is a BFG review. This isn't an X Division rant review. This isn't the point. But, uh, you know, everything must be addressed. I think uh, Helms, unfortunately, got dealt a shorthand when he was trying to do it. But, yeah, you're right, man. Going back to it, I think someone's got to really put some emphasis yeah. on the X Division. Yeah, that, that are... Bottom line, bottom line, next time Bound for Glory comes around, there better be a good X Division showcase on it. There better be. There be and it better happen soon, actually. We, we are severely lacking. But, yeah, man, let's uh, let's put a bow on it, Kyle. What do you think? We, we got the, X, the, the uh, Bound for Glory review done here. And uh, how do you think we did for our debut on the Impact Launch? Think we did all right? Pretty think people good. Will come pretty back? good. Uh, I don't think they're ever going to listen to us ever again. I think BQ is going to fire us. I think we're going to be back on our account. But all that aside, I think we did a good job. I think we did great. I think uh, the Impact Lounge will get to know us. You know, this is just an introduction. There's going to be you know a bit of a bit of a feeling out period. We're on probation with the Impact Lounge listeners. Shout out to Ro and Adam. They do a great job. Uh, I think our show's a little goofier, a little looser. But you still get that good analysis. Shout out to BQ for giving us the opportunity, Trent. Uh, Absolutely. I got my and my start in this podcasting thing was with BQ on the King of the Mountain show years ago. Uh, hell of a guy. I love BQ. So, BQ, thank you for giving us the opportunity to bless your airwaves in the ear holes of your listeners, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, BQ, thank you very much for the opportunity and the Impact Lounge listeners for uh, for welcoming us. So let's see how, how you like it. Let us know how you like it. They're pretty interactive, the Lounge listeners, so let us know what you thought about us. And if you like us, you can let us know directly at our social media. We are located at We Talk Impact. Do it just like Inst- Eli Drake. Put your fingers up in the air. We I am. Talk Impact. We- it's like a, we talk impact, dummies. Yeah, there's and there's, there's a double at the end there. We talk impact. We talk impact, dummies. And you can find us at We Talk Impact on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Look us up there. Follow us. Rate, review, subscribe uh, to our feeds. You know We are located. You can look up the Total Nonstop Impact podcast. It's available on uh, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio. Our feeds over there do you know we did some other stuff in the past. We'll be doing some exclusive stuff uh, going forward on on those feeds. But uh, take a look, man. Follow us. Get in touch with us, and uh, let us know what you think. I want some feedback. Give me feedback. I'm hungry. Kyle, anything to close it out with to, to let these people go? I only got one thing to say to these people. What do you got? Total nonstop impact. Impact talk for impact fans. We're out of here, folks. Yo, right now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah.